This is Professor Homa, and I'm going to review doing a vignette and a colorization on a 5x7 photo. And here's an example right here. Here's kind of the finished product. Um, this was a color photo that was given kind of a, a beigey kind of tint. And then it has this soft border around the side, which we call a vignette, V-I-G-N-E-T-T-E. -T -T -E. um, so I'm going to go over the steps of doing this in Photoshop. This is the finished product. I'm going to close up the finished version and I'm going to go over starting our new document we're going to make a 5 by 7 print so we're going to make a 5 by 7 Photoshop document and we're going to set it up in the resolution and color mode that we want so I'm going to go file new and I'm going to go in here and it already came up because I already did it before but one of the things you want to make sure you do is make sure you always change in if it says pixels make sure you change it to inches because 7 by 5 pixels is very tiny so I have 7 inches wide, 5 inches high. My resolution for high resolution print is 300. And I'm going to work in RGB color mode. As far as the background contents, it could be white or transparent. I'll leave it white right now. And I'm going to hit OK. And there's my document. And I could zoom, zoom out or zoom into this. And I have my rulers out right now, so you can see it's 5 by 7 and I'm gonna open another document and drag my JPEG into here and resize it and crop it as needed. That way I'll know that whatever I do will be the exact size, resolution, and color mode that I want. So I'm gonna go file open and I'm gonna open up my original JPEG and it's this covered bridge picture and right now you can see it's taking up the whole window. I'll zoom out a little bit so you can see it. And up in Photoshop you can see that we're opening up things in tabs. We have two tabs here. This is the JPEG that's open right now, and here, if I click on this, this is the Photoshop document that I haven't done anything with yet. And I can go back and forth, and if I wanted to close one of these, I would hit that X. Um, but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go right up here to my Arrange Documents icon, and I'm going to select Tile All Vertically. And all there's only two of them, so only two of them are going to tile. And that'll put these two windows, tab windows, side by side. And I'm going to take my arrow tool and I'm going to drag this bridge picture into this Photoshop document over here. And what should happen, it should become a new layer over here. So I'm going to use my arrow tool. And I could do a select all, copy, paste, but I'm just going to do a quick drag. And when you see that border over here, you could leave go anytime. doesn't matter where, you could just leave go. And then over here, I'm going to close this document. And my whole window is now taken up by this untitled document. And I'm going to zoom out a little bit so I could see, if you could see here, these are my transform handles of that image. And notice that the image is quite a bit bigger than the window, than the 5x7 window. And that's because the original image um, had, was about 10 megapixels, so it had a lot of pixels. So when you bring in an image with very high resolution or a lot of pixels, it's going to show up bigger. If you bring in an image like from the web that has very low resolutions and doesn't have very many pixels, it'll show up very small. So this is becoming kind of a, a, a bigger fish in a little pond and if you had a low resolution image it would be a you know small fish in a big pond alright we're gonna scale this by grabbing one of these handles and you have to make sure that show transform handles is um, is checked in order to see this or else you won't see these so I'm gonna grab and notice that you can move this around without having to grab these handles so I can move it around that's not really a transformation that's just um, you know repositioning it but I'm gonna grab one of these handles from the corner I'm getting on my arrow tool and I'm going to hold my shift key. That'll keep it in proportion so I don't stretch it. So I'm going to move this around and notice that it gets a kind of a solid line uh, around the transform handles. And I'm going to scale it and I'm going to move this around too. So I could leave go and kind of position this in here. I'm going to position this photo. I'll zoom, zoom in a little bit more and I'll position this photo. So I see the end of the bridge here. I'll see some of the grass down here. Now I want to see a little bit more of the sky. So I'll zoom out and hold shift and, and just reposition this a little bit. I want to see kind of the front of the bridge and that, that's a pretty good that's framed out pretty well and it's cropped in a little bit. You could see them cutting off maybe an inch and a quarter on the right side and maybe a half an inch on top and the bottom. Um, once I'm done with this transformation I'm gonna hit either I could use this checkbox check box up here to hit OK and it even says commit transform. That commits it because once you transform something it's gonna realign the pixels to the grid um, and it actually would do some resampling. So when I, that's why it kind of gives you this chance to undo it. You can hit your escape key to get out of it. But I'm going to hit return. 
and that will realign everything to the grid and now this image is now resized. You don't want to do a lot of resizing back and forth and you want to most likely do your sizing down making it from bigger to smaller is the best thing. I'm going to go over and name this layer um, bridge <coughs> And what I'm going to do with this, before I, I do anything with any uh, vignettes or anything like that, I'm going to do uh, just a couple basic image adjustments. And what I'm going to do first, and I like to start with this, is to go to Image Adjustments Levels. And Levels will show me uh, a histogram of the distribution of pixels. It will show me, um, these are the darks. At the black triangle are the darks, the white triangle are the lights, and the gray triangle are the midtones. And if you notice, there's a lot of darks in here. There's uh, some spikes of light, and it's kind of low in the midtone range. And if you look at this image, you can see there's a lot of lights. There's a sky, there's some whites here, really bright whites, bright whites here, some green grass. So it's a very contrasty image. So you're seeing, you know, you're seeing highlights, you're seeing darks, you're not seeing a lot of midtones. The midtones you are seeing are probably, you know, on the sides of this wall here, and in some of the trees. So it's a very contrasty photo because it's outside. Um, in sunlight, so you'll see a lot of contrast. If this was a cloudy day, um, this histogram on a cloudy day would probably have, you know, more midtones. It would probably be opposite. You would be kind of lower in the darks and lights, and it would be higher in the midtones. So anyway, this is a pretty good range. I'm not seeing any gaps. The only time we move, move the the end of the highlights is when we have kind of a gap or like a flat line at the end. We have a little flat line at this end. But if I move that, it would just darken my shadows, which I don't want to do because I would lose detail. So in this case with levels, I went to image adjustment levels. I don't really have anything to do. And that's okay because it's a, it's a fairly, uh, it, this photograph has a nice range of tones because it's an outdoor photo. Um, one thing I do want to check though, that I, that I like to, to pull out some detail of shadows, um, it's something called image adjustments, shadow highlights. And we're just going to focus on the shadows. But Shadows Highlights has the ability to pull detail from shadows. Now, if you look at this image and I click um, Preview, is how it looks with the adjustment made. And if I unclick it, that's the before. So this is before, after. And you can see it's pulling more detail out of the shadows. Maybe a little too much. I don't want it brightened too much because the shadows do add contrast. I don't want to lose my contrast. But I do want a little detail in my shadows. So I'm going to, you know, if it comes up by default at 50%, I might take it down to somewhere around 20%. Because what it'll still do, it'll still bring out some detail in the shadows. It'll bring out some detail um, in this brick wall, bring in some detail in the, the trees, um, underneath the roof here of the covered bridge. So it's bringing in some detail, but I don't want it, I don't want it, uh, everything too light. I do want, I do like the contrast, so I'm going to put it at a setting like 20 and hit OK. So that gives me a nice little, little bump in my shadow, so, so it's not getting too dark. And I'm pretty good with my image right now. There's not, I don't have any, it's not too warm, it's not too cool. It's a really, pretty nice range of colors. So I'm going to stop right here, and then we'll move on to putting the vignette or the soft edge frame on the photo.